Let's now speak to Harry Fawcett. He's joining us live now from our London bureau. Harry, first of all, we're hearing that the EU has frozen aid to the Palestinians. What does this mean? Well, it means an immediate end to one of the major sources of funding for uh, Palestinian uh, institutions, for the Palestinian Authority in the occupied West Bank as well. It's come from the head of EU enlargement at the European Commission, Oliver Vahelyi. Uh, he says the scale of terror and brutality against Israel and its people is a turning point. And so we're talking about $728 million worth of aid that is immediately frozen. Now, this is money that goes, uh, some of it, to Gaza, the, the lion's share, to the occupied West Bank. Uh, it goes a significant proportion to the UNRWA organization, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian refugees, uh, which looks after education for uh, many children, among other things. Now, uh, the Israelis have long complained about some of the syllabus content of some of those schools. And so there is some reference, I think, to that point later in his statement that he made on X, formerly Twitter, saying that the foundations for peace, tolerance and coexistence must now be addressed. Incitement to hatred, violence and glorification of terror have poisoned the minds of too many, he says. Uh, there's been some pushback uh, under that Twitter comment, that X comment, uh, with people talking about collective punishment, because, of course, the attacks that were carried out on Saturday were carried out by uh, the fighters of Hamas. Uh, Fatah, which is in charge of the Palestinian Authority, is a rival faction, of course. Um, and as well as this from the EU, in terms of its uh, sort of global aid to the Palestinians, there are also bilateral deals between member countries of the EU and Palestinian institutions. Germany announcing that it is also uh, putting an, a temporary end to those as well. It is suspending them. Uh, the minister in charge said that she wouldn't talk about freezing them, but that it was reviewing them and had temporarily suspended them. That's a, a total over the, this year and the, and the next year of uh, some $264 million. And Austria has done the same thing as well, about $20 million worth of aid in that case. Uh, the foreign minister of Austria also saying the extent of the terror is so horrific that we can't go back to business as usual. And Harry, just on another note, we're seeing a lot of disruption to international travel. What's happening as far as you're aware on that front? Yes, yeah, so a number of uh, United States airlines had over the weekend announced that they were uh, suspending their flights to and from Ben Gurion Airport, the Tel Aviv Airports, uh, the United Airlines, American Airlines, <clears throat> Delta as well, and more airlines are being added to that list. Uh, Air France, Emirates, Lufthansa, there have been disruptions and changes to the schedule for Virgin uh, out of London. British Airways is maintaining its service but is changing uh, its schedule to earlier flights, saying it is keeping uh, its flights under review. Other airlines as well have suspended or at least cancelled flights. So this isn't obviously just about tourism. It's also about uh, Israeli citizens and indeed a, a number of Palestinians uh, who have dual nationality, uh, many of whom, especially recently for the Palestinians, had been using the airport in Tel Aviv because of a, a new U.S. visa waiver program, which presumably is going to be very seriously affected by what's going on. Uh, and a lot of Israelis have dual nationality as well. So this is a, a major disruption to a large number of people who, who have family and sort of alternative bases uh, from which they, they may well find it much more difficult to get to and from. OK, Harry, thanks very much indeed for bringing us the latest there from London.